morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines for COVID-19, maintaining a social distance of two meters and using hand sanitizers. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering chant is number 437 in your Catholic Book of Worship, Crown Him with Many Thorns. <laughs> of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Morning. And today we celebrate the great feast of the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus. As we gather to celebrate the sacred Eucharist today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to recognize the presence of Jesus in those that walk beside us.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant we pray to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I, Daniel, watched in my vision, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and his hair on his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched visions in the night, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm can be found on page 222 in your Catholic Book of Worship.
reading from the second letter of Peter. We do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, and suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. 
As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I had a great experience uh, last year with a group of people from here in this diocese to go to Israel, and one of our places we traveled was up the top of the mountain of the Transfiguration. There was a beautiful church there run by the Franciscan sisters. It is a big mountain. It was pretty scary. But, you know, for all of us who have been to the top of the mountain, there's always something awe-inspiring about mountains. They seem to raise our hearts and minds to God. So accompanied by these three, three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, Jesus went up the mountain, I guess to pray for God's guidance and comfort as he prepared for his journey towards Jerusalem and the impending suffering and death. And the apostles knew the humanity of Jesus. They were with him every day. They knew, they knew him very well. But now they were blessed by the divinity of Jesus. That's the beautiful thing. Jesus' face shone like the sun. And in the presence of very important figures, Moses the lawgiver from the Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament, and Elijah the great and faithful prophet, very symbolic. These disciples see who Jesus really is, the new Moses, the new Elijah, the Messiah, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Slowly the transition we see from the Old Testament into the New Testament, the New Covenant is taking place in the presence of the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They now know for sure that Jesus was truly the Son of God. This was a very important moment for the disciples. The apostles did not want that experience to end, of course, and the transfiguration was meant really to deepen their faith as they prepared for the death and resurrection of Jesus and the impending new beginnings of the new Christian church, which Peter, James, and John were leaders of. It would give them a taste of their future glory because all three were martyred for their faith. What is good for us to know and trust is the truth that Jesus is with us on our mountains of feeling the closeness and love of God and Jesus is just as present with us in the dark valleys, the dark times when we feel that sometimes God is absent maybe. You know? Transfiguration or mountaintop experiences can happen to us and the people in events of our lives, you know, sometimes it's the birth of a child or a wedding or something like that or traveling in the woods and, you know, on a beautiful something in nature that really kept, captures our breath. Sometimes these are our mountaintop transfiguration experiences where we really feel the presence of God with us. The message of the transfiguration of Jesus for us is that there is a connection being sub- between suffering and death and resurrection and glory. There is no shortcut to the glory of heaven without first carrying our cross with Jesus to Calvary. You know, Peter struggled to learn that there could be no glory without the cross. He always tried to get Jesus away from that. It took a long time for Peter and the other disciples to understand that God was present in the darkness of Calvary and he was just as present in the wonderful light of the transfiguration and the resurrection. Hopefully we have all known transfiguration moments. Peter, with Peter we say it is wonderful for us to be here. We certainly remember our Calvary moments of suffering. The Lord is always, as I said, present as always just as much as he is in our transfiguration experiences. In both our moments of darkness and light, God says to us, this is my son, the chosen one, the beloved. Listen to him. Because the Lord speaks to us powerfully to us in the darkness and in the light. In the Sanctus, in our Holy Holy, we always sing, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We acknowledge in that acclamation how the created world is filled with God's good presence. That is especially true with regard to the human person who alone is made in the image and likeness of God. God could say to each of us, to each person, This is my beloved. As God invited the disciples on the mountain to see Jesus more deeply, he invites us to see each other more deeply to relate to each other in a way that acknowledges the wonder of our being, the wonder of God's creation. We can fail to appreciate what is all around us, you know. God calls us to cherish and celebrate the wonder of life around us as the disciples celebrated the wonder of Jesus on the mountain. So the transfiguration then is about letting the glory of God shine through us 
so that others can get, catch a glimpse of that glory of God. The risen life, the transfigured life, the eternal life starts here, not when we die. It starts here with accepting God's love and sharing it with others. That is the beginning of our risen life, the transfigured life. At Mass, we celebrate the transfiguration experience, the summit of our Christian faith here every day. The Mass is our mountaintop experience and prepares us for the crosses that we do face in life. We are drawn to this altar and to our transfigured Lord in the Eucharist. At the Mass, the bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of the risen, the glorious risen Jesus. As we consume the body and blood of the Lord Jesus, we are transfigured and our light shines as we bring Christ out to others beyond this church and bring others to Christ so that they too may have the same mountaintop experience that we have. Let us pray together our prayers of intercession. We pray for Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Peter, and that the Lord may give them the strength and courage and guidance to lead our church. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, that in the Eucharist we are a people who extend God's loving compassion, mercy, and hospitality to others, especially the most vulnerable in our world, we pray to the Lord. That all global leaders may commit themselves to create a more just and tolerant society, we pray to the Lord. For all those who carry the cross of sickness, especially any of our family and friends who are ill, those preparing for surgery, those who are going through terminal illnesses. We pray for the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon them. We pray to the Lord that eternal light will shine of all, upon all those who have died. And today we, we remember Edward and Bernard and Elizabeth Fitzgerald. We pray to the Lord and for your own intention at this Mass today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day, especially our mountaintop experiences. Be with us in our joys and our sorrows. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from all stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he may show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the St. John the Baptist, St. Peter, St. James, and St. John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Thank kingdom, the power, and the glory.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ with one another. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now that we are at alert level two, we are able to have public worship and the reception of Holy Communion at Mass. However, we must take special precautions to ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and prudent, as well as respectful way. Please stay in your seat until the usher guides you. The instructions of the ushers and social distancing of two meters must be observed by everyone wishing to come forward for Holy Communion. The person distributing Holy Communion will wear a face mask and will sanitize his or her hands before distributing Holy Communion. Instead of the individual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, they will sanitize their hands, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in their hands, move to the side to consume the host, and then return to their pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand can receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn can be found in your CBW number 610, Taste and See.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now a prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to confirm to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless all of us today, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our mission and hymns can be found in your CBW, number 366. Oh, raise your eyes on high. Mm -hmm. 